Hello, and welcome back to 10 Very Big Books, a Malazan read-through podcast. My name is Peter Bond, and today with me on the show is Iskar Jarek. Welcome back to the show, buddy. Thank you so much for having me back. We made it. We made it. We did it. Yeah. That's right. We're the, we're talking about the novels of the Malazan Empire. These are our little discussions of the Malazan Empire miniseries, and we are bringing it all to an end with a discussion of book six, A Sale by Ian Cameron Esselmont, and uh, very excited to kind of be uh, wrapping up these uh, six books here. And they... Uh, I guess we'll get into it. I mean, it, yeah. it is kind of a they're connected. I guess this is kind of a kind of an end to this saga. I mean, yeah. uh, so to speak, the Venn diagrams overlap. Yeah, they overlap. Well, we'll we'll get into it. We got plenty of time, but um, let's just start up top. And uh, it was my first time reading the book, but Iskar, I know you've read the book before, so I yeah. wonder what you had thought about the book in the past, and then maybe how this reread struck you. Yeah, definitely. No, I remember loving it. And I remember feeling like, you know, in some ways, and I think this is something they share where they just bring it home. They both brought it home at the end for me. You know what I mean? And kind of like threads that were loose and hanging out there kind of got explained. There's also, I think, some value in like closure from the the 10 books, too, because you get some stuff like with the kind of founding races that I thought was I almost seemed like the full conclusion of like that kind of period of history in, you know, woo or whatever the, you know what I mean? The all encompassing word would yeah. be. And uh, and so I, I liked it. I think it's, you know, again, action packed and stuff. It's very easy to follow. It wasn't like a chain of dogs where you're like trying to understand where they're, you know what I mean? It's like they're very clearly just moving north on this big giant con. And so it's like, you know, plot wise, you know, very tight and, you know, not a whole lot going on there. So I, I thought it was all pretty fun. I'm a I'm a fan of of a sale. I think it's it's up there for me as one of my one of my tops for him. I still love Stone Wheeler. I thought that was one of the funnest ones to reread just because I, the first time I was trying to figure out what was going on, but the, this one and, and a sale are, are chef's kiss. Interesting to hear you say that. For the record, side note, I feel like Stone Wielder has only aged on me. And mm. it feels like a book I'd be curious. I don't know. I now look back on it and I'm like, I don't know. Kind of anyway, but to turn our to turn our attention to a sale, well, we're gonna have to talk about the ending. I think I was a little cool on this book ultimately. There are several things in the book I like a lot yeah. and we're gonna get to it, but um, I think the ending really struck me and really kind of almost left me, left me. It felt like the wrong note. And then it really kind of jigger rejiggered my view of the book in a way. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you know what? There's no rules. We're spoiling the book. If you didn't know that we spoil the book on the show. So if you haven't read yeah. a sale, that's what's happening. So I guess uh, t- let's just get into the ending then. Did you see it coming? Well, OK. So the ending has a lot of different parts. And let me first declare this. Maybe it's I'm just like a dummy, but like the Crimson Guard's vow being connected to the ritual of Talon, I had not super considered, Yeah, you know, uh, and like, I guess some people had, but I had not. And I got to tell you, super fucking cool. I thought it was fucking awesome. Yeah. And I mean, obviously the books had been creating, a, the book had been creating a lot of parallels yes. between the Talon I Mass and the Crimson Guard. And obviously Shimmer storyline is much, as much to do with this. Right. And, um, you know, it's been very interesting to see the Crimson Guard be a part of like the Crimson Guard's undeath is like a big part of their story. And oh, I, yeah. I've, I've, I've found that really interesting since it was brought into the fold. And uh, especially since it, I feel like it kind of grew. I don't know. Mm. In Return of the Crimson Guard, I didn't meet them. And that was my first thought. I wasn't Im- immediately brought into like this question of yeah. kind of existential part of it. But here's here's mostly where all, the sour note that struck me is when we got to the end and I guess Kyle, you know, he's got this yeah. stone and like he's like, he helps all the races and then all the races make this agreement. And ultimately I guess I had this feeling like, was that what this book was about? 
were we building up to was the book about the races making peace mm. you know i i left that i guess i it was just such a strange thing to come to because to me obviously tackling what has the past between the talani mass and the jaga yeah are a big part of this book right but it, it the book didn't feel super focused on that and, mm. and i actually think that was probably to its detriment i feel like the book was maybe trying to do too much in a way so i ultimately felt that when we came to this point of i guess trying to do reconciliation and trying to talk about what reconciliation might mean or look like I, is like is that what we were trying to get at like what mm. does it mean to reconcile between these things and reconcile past I don't know, but uh, all I know is I came to the end of this book and I was struck that this is what it was building to completely flummoxed me. Yeah. So, uh, I, no, you know, that, that, I don't know. What do you think? I, I was kind of looking at it as a, as a parallel, you know, between the Talon IMAS too, because they're kind of in the same boat in a lot of ways, right? Where they're like, oh, well, I'm reading House of Chains right now, just as, you know, tan- aside. But, um, you know, there's this whole idea that they're, you know, war was kind of like pointless that these jagged were like so like isolated and stuff that they like swore this vow and like basically did all this stuff so that they could overcome like logistical constraints like transportation you know uh personnel mm-hmm. movement and all this stuff you know what i mean so that they could like kind of circumvent the the glaciers and all this and all this stuff and it was like these people were like you know extinguishing themselves anyway and like but they just like doubled down and like couldn't let go and like even like the renegades and stuff in house of chains are like you know this is kind of stupid and pointless and bailed or like Kalava is you know similar uh-huh. in in that way too and like I thought what was interesting is like and and that's why I like kind of the silver fox stuff which she comes back and she's like an 85 year old lady and now it's been like a couple years but like you know is that you have this like faction who's like kind of ready to move in and like circle the wagons and like be focused on each other right which is the one thing that totally got let go in this like endless cruise say it and like the crimson guard back in the return of the crimson guard kind of like bailed on this like endless vendetta and did and were kind of like focused on themselves and the whole reason why they went to a sale this time is like you know kind of a circling of the wagons and that whole like talon i mass arc and here's like the ones who like can't let it go and lana's tog i think the one from the glaciers and memories of ice i think it's that one who like comes late and whatever doesn't tell the other people and they're just like hanging oh, yeah. on to this vendetta with a death grip and and i thought that was kind of you know, I, I have like an eighth grade vocabulary, so I can't articulate. But you know what I mean? That juxtaposition of like the people who are like, oh, shit, this is meaningless. And like really waking up and seeing like things for what it was versus the people who are just like so militantly, you know, just following the path blindly, regardless, I thought was interesting. Hmm. And they're going back to get Cal Brin and stuff. So they're all about like getting their people back together and like, let's just focus on our, and they were just like living in Stratum or wherever, chilly. Yeah. I think they're just going back to Stratum, right? I mean, I, I do really like the parallel you're drawing there um, between kind of, I guess, learning to put down yeah, an, but- an, endless war or something, I guess, between these two, the Crimson Guard and the Talani Mass. I, I don't know. I, I guess I, I kind of felt like sometimes uh, kind of a big picture thing. We should get into some characters soon. Like, I, I guess I didn't quite know. Ex- like, was the book was the book about the jacket and the Talani mask? Because that's what it that's what I thought the book was about. And then it was a, about that for a bit, but then also became about a lot of other stuff. And and ultimately, sometimes I feel like that maybe muddled some of the, the effect and kind of where that because it's almost to the point. All right. Here's just a frustration I have. And, and and here's a frustration I have after reading these all these books. And yeah. and listen, I mean, I've liked most of them, but I have to say, here's my here's a big take. Knight of Knives remains probably oh. my favorite book he wrote. Nice. And, and listen, I like a lot of other books almost more than that. And I think they're a lot of fun. Yeah. But here's something I really admire about Knight of Knives is that it's just two characters. It's like 250 pages yeah. and it's just doing one thing. Right. You know, and even then I still felt it was like, ah, oh, we're, we're like muddy in the water a bit. I just feel like I wish I really wished that in this like side off thing or in these other things that we use this opportunity to tell a different type of story besides like 
we have 20 characters and there's all these different plot lines and factions and then it's all going to come together and do this big thing and we're like telling a moment in history and it's like oh history is all these different points of views and stories like a kilometer you know and that's fine and all it's great stuff but it's like we've done this so much yeah. i really almost wish like i would just read a book that was just about shimmer coming to thinking yeah. about her life and thinking about shimmer, mortality yeah. you know maybe maybe that's not a whole novel i get it you know right but i, I just feel sometimes exhausted by that every time i feel like we have to be at this huge scope and that's why sometimes i feel like i get to these endings and i'm like you know did, could, could yeah. we have just turned down the volume a little right. you know could we have just made this a more narrow story and like i was i would i would be much more interested in a more focused story about the Jal the jagat and the talani mass and really thinking about that right. i mean to me that stuff is so rich that i would spend 200 pages just really thinking about that that those types of conflicts i don't need it to be a 600 page thing that also you know what i mean yeah yeah and the malazan stuff i think you know is probably the stuff like i don't know if there's like a kind of you're compelled to tell some more stuff about what happened to bring in like the possum you know ending and sure. you're all like hopped up on goofballs and stuff or whatever but like that part you know wasn't really tied in to me like these books the main arc outside of night and eyes but starting with return of the crimson guard it's like mostly a a crimson guard story even stone wielder which they're barely even in it still is like you know bards was there getting tortured right so it is still kind of even like a crimson guard kind of through line and stuff but then it's like there's this whole chunk of a sale that's like dedicated to you know malik rel or whoever you know what i mean like trying to establish a stronghold in a sale yeah the books do the books do trying to do a lot you know and and uh and let's kind of let let's kind of lay some of it out. Let's kind of lay some of it out and, and kind of. I actually like some of those parts as as interesting, but I can see what you're saying from like a book cohesion standpoint. Well, and that's the thing. It's not like I did, like lots of these parts I liked, and we're going to talk about them. They're I, like I, good standalone chunks. Like, hey, I like this line. I like that. Do you know what it is? I have a very similar frustration with House of Chains. It's very funny you mentioned that book. I feel like while I'm reading that book, there's lots of parts I'm like, man, I kind of really like this part, and yeah. then I get to the book, end of the book, and I'm like wait a second and i feel like i'm looking back at like the hallway i just walked down and then i like start like kind of feeling a sense of whatever you know yeah totally no i think i've never even thought about it but you're right i think if it was just the like the crimson guard storyline where they like do the big reveal at the end juxtaposed against like silver fox and her struggle you know against lana's tog or whatever and then you have mm. the kind of the mega uh, convergence or whatever at the end and that would have probably worked still pretty good I don't know but there's a lot I, there's a lot but the thing is it's not like I didn't anyway let's get into it yeah. but I will say once again the reveal about the vow absolutely rules 10 out of 10 loved it amazing so fucking metal as shit dude I'm yeah. like can shimmer access to lawn now like is there gonna be like is every there's like so many can they turn to dust and just like go across the ocean super quick like how yeah and then when shimmers like kind of I guess die she didn't die like kind of die she goes into the, some sort of nether. I don't really understand. But also, it may, I was reading posts online. I was just like reading with people's thoughts yeah. about the book. And really just a classic Malazan thing. You know, I think a lot of people come to these books because they love like trying to puzzle it out while yeah. they're reading and thinking about it and like looking at all the clues. Not me. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Because I guess I'm reading all these people that are like, well... I've known it was Talon forever now. Yeah. And I'm just like, it just completely smucks, like smack me like a brick across the face. It's yeah. like, Ugh, no, oh, no, my God, it's so fucking awesome. At all. You know, yeah, yeah was really that's cool. why I read them three, four times, you know, it's because because uh, I'm I'm a complete idiot and I need to have it thrown at me a hundred times before I go. Oh, yeah. Like, and that's why it's fun to go back is because then you can kind of connect some of the dots and like some of just the stuff that you think is like thrown in there and whatever and just like kind of extraneous information and whatever. You're like, oh, he was going to use that i have to tell you i think speaking of like the read throughs of the erickson books i mean like i really feel like because of how small brained i am yeah like i feel like i'm really reading the books for the first time so to speak the yeah. second time through 100 and really i would almost feel like at the end of this read through i would be better prepared to host a malazan read through podcast do you know what i mean yeah because like i could tell you what happens in books eight nine and ten but could i right you know could i read you know i mean it's like this is my fourth time reading the books like in my life or whatever and mm. i feel like i'm now like able to connect the dots and like understand linkages across books and stuff like that which is like you know it's taken me like i said four times in about like 12 15 years of my life 
Which is a whole other thing. I mean, in a way, it's kind of a criticism, or I mean, it could be if you want, depending on... Anyway, that's a whole other thing. But there is just a lot of plot in these books. Mm. There's a lot of plot, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And in, in any well, given book, there's a lot of stuff. You have to be kind of a glutton for punishment in some ways. 100%. Now, let's get into the stuff in this yeah. book. So we uh, follow up, and this is the last... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not the last. We'll see, I guess. But uh, we're putting it into Kyle who is the closest thing maybe there is to a main character in these six books. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If if Um, you would have been in Night and Ives somehow, then that would have (laughs) been. But yeah. Yeah. And uh, I I dug him in this book. I love that we got to see him kind of have the the sword and, and make better use of it. I loved... And it basically anyone has a cool magic sword I love. That's yeah. why I also love the Ormond and Boar's Tooth stuff. Um, not yeah. as a spear, but still awesome stuff we'll talk about later. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's just cool to see Kyle here. And uh, I, I could not tell you why. I feel like I totally detached from Kyle and Stonewielder mm. and was like, I don't give a shit about him in yeah. this book. But for some reason, I opened up this book and I just instantly was fully connected to him and was excited to see him. And maybe it had to do with he started on a cool pirate ship because pirates rule. This book is a lot of awesome boats yeah. and um, boats. The Lady's Luck, I believe it's called, uh-huh. is fucking cool. And oh, yeah. so Dude, I don't he, know. I was good. On, mm. I don't. He's not. I, I, he lives in Alaska. I don't know if he's a sailor or what, but he does the ocean stuff good. And I thought he did it great in, uh, in Stone Wielder, too. You know what I mean? Just like the boat stuff is badass. Hundred percent. I mean, I know almost nothing about boats. Same. <laughs> he could be totally not correct, but I would never. Hundred percent. Yeah. So, so it's like could be convincing to me, but um, I, I found it just a fun time, mm. and it was you know, yeah, a- and it was. I feel like it was the exact type of thing when pirates show up in a book. I feel like you kind of want them to have a su- certain vibe, and I feel like they he just nailed. I don't know. He just nailed the seafaring vibe, yeah, you know. Totally. And and, and Carthron and the R- Ragstopper stuff is also really fun. Always I felt. fun. Yeah, I loved how Kyle just like straight up. You know, I I think Kyle's fun in this one too because he's like tormented in some ways. You know what I mean? It's not like he doesn't have yeah. a chip on his shoulder. He's not trying to prove nothing. You know what I mean? It's like those dudes try and like um, post up on him on the boat, and he's just like. I'll just jump over the side and freaking swim. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, I'm not going to destroy all these dudes. And it's the same the whole way. You know, all the tribes are like trying to prove and like jockey for, you know, the biggest like alpha position or whatever. And he's like, don't make me like kill you, dog. You know what I mean? And he like, and that's how he like earns all their respect, I guess, or whatever. It's like just a treacherous um, journey. But I like the like kind of reluctant, you know, I, well, he's not necessarily a hero in this book, but he's like a reluctant you know protagonist he's not like an aggressor and like i got this badass sword let's go out and like you know what i mean it's yeah he's not like bloodthirsty hero kyle or whatever yeah yeah it's kind of funny to see how i feel like he's i feel like some of the wind had been taken out of his sail and Mm. stone wielder you know because you know he spends all that time there and there's kind of a time jumper so yeah you know he does all this different work and i feel like by the time in this book, I feel like you can t- kind of tell we're dealing with an older, more world weary Kyle than we certainly meet at the beginning of Return of the Crimson Guard, you know? Yeah. He had the tragic love story, too, you know, which is like. Did that did that work for you? I felt like it was sad. You know what I mean? Like, I felt bad for him because it's like, again, I think they do the like kind of lack of communication or it's like we're just where communication could have easily like, you know what I mean? Mm. But they're both like so like walled off and like hurt and emotional and whatever. And he's like, yeah, he's like, let's go. And she's like, oh, I can't like, no, we're going to go. And he's like, oh, and then he's just all bitter. um, Mm. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I know people like that. You know what I mean? Where it's like, you could have just been like, oh, well, dude, I thought, you know what I mean? And just kind of like, that wasn't that. I don't know. Well, no, I mean, tragic is that it's like so easy to to sort some of that stuff out. But what's kind of funny is, I mean, it's not always that easy, right? Yeah. So I think that is, you know, no, uh, that's, the, 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 that's why yeah, it's relatable because you've been there and you're like, damn, I should have just like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that plot didn't fully land with me. But I do agree that it is one of those things I feel like you always look back and you're like, ah, or like you're watching something and you're just like, people should just fucking say the thing. 
you know? But the amount of times I have just like not said the thing I should have said. Totally. Or that you're like looking back and you're like, man, if I just would have like said how I felt about it, you know? Yeah. And I think like she looked back at the end, but he had already like turned his back or whatever. You know, he's like, dude, I totally snuck into this camp. He's like, you're here. Let's go. And she's like, whoa, no, dude. Like, (laughs) it was uh, poor Kyle. And then he's like, oh, all right. He's like, no, yeah, totally. He's like, I was just, he's all, I'm going out here anyway. So it's, it's totally cool. Speaking of the ladies' luck, I want to connect. I think, uh, r- r- fucking these names, I do yeah. not know, but R- Ruth, R- Ruth, Ruth, maybe. Yeah, that's how I read it. Another great guy, and um, I feel like there's kind of a he's he's kind of a parallel in a way. I would say maybe to Orman. I don't know. Kind of, mm. they're both younger guys trying yeah. to find their interesting. No, I mean, I love Kyle's that. no longer a younger guy, but I feel like they're both have this like young young fantasy hero energy you know totally and he like doesn't realize he's like a mage and stuff and then other people are like yeah you're the (laughs) yeah yeah no i i loved him and i i love that old like you know tough uncle who he like kind of thought was always like harsh and a dick to him and then he like realizes later on that it's like he was like instilling certain like qualities and like you know what i mean guaranteeing Mm. his like safety and respect on the on the boat and stuff and it's like you never know what you know he kind of realizes to like what he had and stuff and like appreciates it and then to like see him under this like such a freaking just like yeah you hate those total like scumbags that's like a that store ball guy or whatever the first mate who, yeah, yeah. Like, it's fucking one. terrible yeah he's like the guy you love to hate you know what i mean because he's just like totally that like schoolyard bully who's like everyone you know he tries to like manipulate himself into this like alpha position amongst all these like cronies and to mm. see him like get the ship and actually he, like i guess he must die right on that like thing when everybody is like dying or whatever it but it's way, like yeah i was bummed to see i guess root doesn't get his uncle's ship he ultimately like ends up going with what's it you know the the guy and his blind wife so yeah but i don't know i, I felt satisfied with where he ended up i, I do it fits yeah. but it's just yeah. sad it's like his uncle's boat is just like some other scumbag is just gonna have this really dope like mare you know galley that is like and he's just like mm. all right i'm out of here with like without fingers or whatever but where's like the Ruth follow up? Maybe I don't know, dude. That would be epic he, to see him like in ten years, and he's just this epic badass like sailor dude. I, I have to tell you though, could you imagine they're like the next books about Ruth? Yeah. I feel like everyone would pick who the fucks Ruth. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. I just watched a crippled god like review, and someone said, Whoa, "Wow, more characters." <laughs> Yeah, that was the first like thing I was like, yep, always more no. characters, bro. That's always it never ends. I remember I remember opening up that book and being like, fucking Christ. At no <laughs> point does the list ever go down, you know, <laughs> like you thought this was loose ends. Nope, there's more more threads here, especially since Erickson really loses his mind. And just the ima- I guess he just decided to list every bone hunter that is was ever in the company, you yeah. know, and it's just like I'm looking at that list and you're like, I don't even know 75%. 75% of these names are brand new, you know? Exactly. Uh, Anyway, anyway. Yeah, so uh, speaking of ships, uh, we mentioned it before. uh, Carthron Crust returns. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. uh, With the old guard, and they're on the rag stopper. Now, I didn't super love the mantle defense storyline and the the whole flotilla thing. I I, I guess there's an element of Veer Smeltude it appeals to, but for me, I I, I don't know. Do, Do I need to know that there's like again a back and ship and there's like these lothari people and just like we just keep her listing how uh, part of me is just like can we just have it's like and there's a bunch of boats i don't know do i need to know it all maybe i don't but yeah. I, I it is fun to tell i kind of liked when kaz does that whole encounter with the lothari earlier in the books yeah but um i, I did enjoy following around in the rag stopper and uh nice to see that kind of link back and uh you know i guess it's some sort of follow-up to the carthron crust reveal in uh, Deadhouse Gates. Yeah, Deadhouse Gates when, it's... when he gives Callum a ride back to to Malad. It, it, but is that when it's revealed it's him? Oh, I don't know if it's revealed that it's him. Then I, I forget. I think they just call him the captain. Yeah. I, I, I all I remember is whenever it was revealed, or I I just had this feeling. I was like, sure, okay. 
you know? Right. So I guess this is a follow up to that. But also I do have this feeling of like, I've never been a big crusts fan and ultimately they feel fairly inconsequential to me. I don't know. Are you a big, big crusts head? <laughs> no, no. I, I, uh, you know, Urko punched down the mud brick house or whatever in, uh, in house of chains. And that's pretty, that's a great one liner, right? He wants punched down that scene. That scene is fun. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm not a huge, I don't, I'm not that partial to him one way or the other. I kind of thought of it as like a follow up. Like he was like kind of attached to the, uh, I, I thought the like Tog Fandere, like, you know, kind of wolf god thing was kind of more the lead there where you have these like aimless, <laughs> you know, like uh, followers of this, like, you know, these gods that are mm. that like need to find some purpose or whatever. I think that was like a nugget that's thrown in for those like, you know those gluttons for punishment who are like mining for nuggets of linkage across books and whatever. Literally the first time ever hearing of it. So yeah. Cause um. there's like all the stuff with like Tog and whatever they like kind of take the beast throne and memories of ice and stuff. And then like, yeah, yeah. They don't end up ultimately making it. And then they, they you know, and so these, these guys are kind of like the Heborix in some way, you know, the, whatever they're called, the blue shields or the blue shields. Yeah. 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 And so they're like, you know, and they kind of, like take up this cause like for you know because they're there's like a, a genocide happening and they're like yeah that's a well, weird yeah, there's, thing to, and there's the mortal sword there yeah I guess I kind of wasn't link I understand the linkage you're kind of set talk and all that yeah. stuff in like the later main books so but that's yeah. what I mean that's like the kind of stuff that it's like it takes you four times to go that's what that was <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And I love that Kyle's part like Jagged too, right? Or like that's the whole beef and why there's like genocide and they're going and like basically like seeing if they can sniff out like how much, um, you know, what percentage of the DNA is like high enough to, to have to exterminate these little kids and stuff. So that's something that's fun you kind of, well, fun, fun, fun you kind of mentioned is I have to say uh, when we talk about the ice bloods, the lowlanders, you know, I mean, I kind of absolutely love the greater Jagut sphere. I mean, I, yeah. I, and I wish I could have learned more about them in this book, but more importantly, I also just enjoyed this kind of like, first off, I just find it cool. Yeah, totally. Period. It's cool. Period. Ice Bloods, cool. Yeah, definitely. A, a sale, cool setting. I liked it. Totally. Period. I enjoyed learning more about more about the Jagats, but something I find fun with this and also I would say the super convoluted Philomen Toblakai uh -huh. greater ancestry that I could not tell you, I could not trace the various yeah. types of giants um, and what is the difference between a Tell and a, you know, yeah. whatever, Teblor. I do find it's fun in a way that it's kind of, because a lot of traditional fantasy is very like, uh, just like, it's like, okay, and it's like, it has a weird idea of race yeah it's just like there's like these buckets of people and it's like it, it's i don't know very clearly and, and this is, <laughs> yeah and, and it's like there's no idea of race as like a thing that or like species or evolution or these things that are changing and, like genetic and, and it's very, <laughs> yeah. yeah genetic it's just kind of just like oh and then there's like you know it's just like there's elves they have pointy ears and all of them do this and you know it's very whatever but um yeah and like jag you know, with like crossbreeds and stuff like that yeah and that's it too. it's just like of course some part of me is like oh it's even more stuff to keep track of you know and it's yeah. like hurting my head but another part of me really appreciates that it's like getting at how like these this blood and how this ancestry kind of you know is really fluid and complicated and like how we construct it and how totally. it, it like has this like dynamic history to it so i i really like that yeah it's um, like a social and, construct and, that we overlay on top right so yeah and how we it also just kind of builds out how like Ah, it's just great. It was great. And, and I, I really enjoy that. And it's cool. So it's a two for one. Totally. And it kind of like goes along with the whole futility thing of these like endless wars and all that stuff, too. You know what I mean? It's like they're these stupid like kind of lines in the sand that we draw and then try and like, you know, organize our lives around like these philosophies and whatever. So Well, especially then when you're talking about like, you know, you're talking about the blood feuds thing earlier, which is obviously yeah. a part of this book is like talking about just dumb fucking shit you know yeah and it also explains like why kyle could run you know what i mean like 
days and days like in the first like couple books you're like what the hell is this like he can just run for like three days straight he's like Carsa, dude like you know what did yeah dude? yeah but then you're like oh yeah they have some like pretty beefy powers or the heels and all those like other like the lost brothers and stuff you're like oh they're these like half or whatever percent like jagged badasses that's like why they knock people out so See, and that's where, like, a lot of this stuff I do actually feel like really vibes together. Mm. I guess I just feel like the ending, I'm like, wait a second, that's what, that's how it ended? That's what we're, <laughs> yeah. gonna, that's what we're going out? I don't know. But, but, I, I, you know, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Totally. I also, just on a side, quick side note, because I really liked expanding the Jagat lore, and mm. I guess we should talk a little bit more about the Talani Mask, because there's a lot of them in this book, and I want to get to Silver Fox. Yeah. But there's also these kind of, like... I don't know, the villainous ones. Yeah. And I enjoy that we're... The Talani Masks are not always played as, like, dark or evil in Erickson's writing. No, yeah, like, um, I, yeah, totally. I would say usually they're actually portrayed as cool and, like, they're, like, the cool allies to the human who's, like, having a hard time or something, you yeah, know? Yeah, totally. They're, like, the buddy. And also, like, you know, if anything, like, tragic, like, we feel sympathy for them, like... A, a lot of tragedies played to them. Totally. And, like... Like, you know, and I've always like kind of wondered too, because like, and even I was wondering this again, not to keep bringing up like how to change, but these like renegade, you know, Talon Imas or whatever. It's like in some ways, like those guys were total scumbags too. You know what I mean? And did like, uh, yeah, yeah. But they like went against the vow because they were like, this is totally stupid. Oh, actually, it was. It was those like seven that were talking about how it's like futile and like the Jagat were killing themselves off anyway and stuff. So like they were like kind of rebelling against the like idiocy of this unnecessary you know kind of single-mindedness or whatever yeah. and uh, they of course what they then went and did like with their freedom was total shady as well but the point is you know what i mean like even there they're like you know i, I was always like there are these guys really the good guys they're like pursuing this endless conquest they're like destroying the whole you know what i mean like they talked about they took the vow so then they like you know because they were like overpopulating because they needed so many warriors that they would just like eat all the food kill all the animals whatever they would like leave these like rich environments environments as like total wastelands like in pursuit of this like vow you know what i mean and i was always like are those guys the good guys and like here like i think it's cool that silver fox is like yo we're not the good guys this is like stupid like we got you know we can focus on ourselves kind of she's like trying to get him to be more crimson guardish or whatever so mm -hmm. like hey let's just go find a place and stratum and chill you know what i mean like stratum and chill copyright <laughs> boom <laughs> copyright yeah so yeah i guess moral of the story is i i love that they were kind of the baddies in this well then that, and that's what i mean i think it's fun it's fun that they're the baddies and it's fun that because in other books we're very often told like oh the talano mass are very scary and bad yeah. and dangerous but like the only ones we ever see and actually spend any time with are like kind of cool sad boys who like are really sad about their whole situation and are helping our heroes out. Totally. You know? And it's like, oh, okay, sure. But it was really fun. I think it was, to me, it added a whole dimension and it made the Talani Mask much richer. And obviously, it drew such a direct comparison to the Crimson Guard. So, yeah. um just love the Talani Mask in this book, especially, well, it's this, this element of them kind of playing antagonism. Totally. Um, how did you feel about Silver Fox in this book? You a big Silver Fox head? Uh, no, not really. Not particularly. I think there is like unfulfilled potential for Silver Fox in the same. You know, I thought Silver Fox was going to be a big thing my first time reading through the books, you know? Same. And and that's why I, I feel like in a way I read Memories of Ice and I was like, Silver Fox is a huge character, yeah. main character in this series. And then because like you thought Tattersail was in Gardens of the Moon, right? You're like, oh, Tattersail's like freaking top top person whatever then she like dies and you're like oh but it's because then it's all going into the silver fox person <laughs> and then and then she's such an awesome character in memories of ice yeah. and she does a bunch of cool shit there's all that talani mass stuff and then like she's gone yeah. and so i guess some part of me is really waiting to see what happened with her and i, I think some part of me is let down just because i love her as a character so much and she doesn't play a huge part in this book you know yeah um totally no it's like you get more of the pran cole and stuff like that who's like you yeah know, trying to keep her whatever alive and i guess be her like little jiminy cricket type <laughs> Yeah, and I guess that's fun in a way, you know? I was hoping for, like, a, a bigger thing with Ganos and stuff. It's just like, hey, the ship sailed, and that was pretty much, the you know, case closed on that. And <laughs> you know what I mean? That thread's yep. 
I mean, part of me, part of me thought this book was about Silver Fox and what she did when she went to a sale. And like, I guess that's a part of this book, but it's not like I would never say that's what this book, you know, I mean, that was clearly just I. She was just a foil to Lannis Tog, I think, which is like, you know, she's trying to get him to do the right thing. And Lannis Tog's like, you know, just we'll we'll worry about that when the job's done or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, of course, she's important to this book. I, yeah, it's just it's not like a follow up is I guess. What no, I mean. no. Um, yeah. Totally. I would like to see her use more powers and do more cool stuff. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what happens like with her and Kalava because they're like frenemies, I guess now. And they're going to like, I think she's that is fun. I I love that Kalava showed back up. Yeah. And they're going to go travel together. Right. So there's another little like buddy cop series where they could just be going around and like condescending to everyone that they meet. Quick side note, Talana I'm asked names, a real weak point of mine. Yeah. I cannot just like they're all so hard to keep track of. The only one I know uh, is Pran Cole because he's like the one who showed up the most. And Monarch Occam because he's kind of a meme. Monarch Occam. Yeah. See, as soon, when you say the when you say the names or you see him, it like triggers something in my head. But like if you had to ask me to list 10 Talon I'm asked, I probably couldn't do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, just a lot of apostrophes. So many apostrophes. I mix up Tool and who's the other one? Own Rack the Broken. Own Rack. Yeah. I, I see. I can't, I can't even. I see, it's enough. And they're the two biggest ones, probably. Yeah. You know? Totally. No, they're like the the like you said. They're like the sad boys, the the bros that share in tragedy. They are actually linked in their tragedy by the same same person, Kalaba. So. Yeah. Organized. Shout out to Kalava, I guess. Yeah, she shows up. Um, she didn't really do much in this either. She just kind of is like the bus driver that's like there to witness and we like see through her eyes, I guess. Or... Yeah, but I feel like it was kind of almost like she had to show up in a way. I don't know. Totally. Well, she's I, totally... I felt very similar to when Possum showed up. I was just like, I mean, yeah, I guess so. You know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, and he's all like, I love that he's just all like drugged up and like depressed and whatever. And then he's like, oh, he's like, there's like that. I forget what her name is, Mal of Greece or whatever. Mm. And he's like, oh, she's up there. And then he like goes up and like goes on this little rampage and gets all cut up and dies. And then he's like, yeah, cool. That was it. And then he like grabs Carthron and he's like, yo, look, I'm sorry that I, you know, mm. I don't know. It was a moment, I guess. <laughs> Um, all right, let's, uh, let's keep things moving. I- I'm kind of just looking at my notes here. I wonder, uh, wonder if you wanted to, th- yeah, you have anything, uh, I mean, just keep moving through characters. Do you have any other just random thoughts you want to throw out? No, I mean, I like the, the whole ice blood thing and I like the kind of, um, you know, which again, I think it kind of like mirrors in some ways, the whole thing going on with the Talon eye mass and the Crimson Guard, like the ice blood stuff. Cause you have this kind of like, on the one hand, this kind of like well i guess they all come together at the end and they're gonna have like one hold right and one yeah plan like and they're whatever. starting a new thing yeah, yeah totally but then you have that other guy who's like the bane guy who stabs it takes his eye out or whatever mm. who's totally still like old school like you know they're like in the middle of this like mass invasion where they should totally be like circling the wagons and like you know unifying he's like fuck you bro <laughs> He's like, yeah, actually, he's like, I still hate your guts. He's like, I don't care that we're being invaded, bro. He's like, and they're like, yeah, you're going to be extinct. He's like, I know that, bro. He's like, what I'm all about, though, is still killing you. (laughs) It's my number one priority is fuck you. (laughs) You're going to die. If you're going to die, I'm going to do it. So totally. And like, but I like Orman, you know, and like, I, I like the the thing that I think he does really well too in all the books is like constantly like peeling back the like mythos to like the actual, you know what I mean? Like a classic thing. Totally. And he does that even in like night and eyes, right? You're doing that with the like uh, original ascension slash assassination. Like you're doing it all throughout in, in the crimson guard stuff. You know what I mean? And they're like real people and shimmer and stuff. And like Orman goes in and he has all these like lofty notions and whatever. And then he like finds out that it's just like, like basically about like brotherhood and commitment to each other and whatever and he like you see him kind of do a mature process he's kind of like Yusek from the orb scepter throne who kind of like also had a lot of preconceptions and kind of grows into some little bit of wisdom over time and i thought it was cool to see him at the end i think it's freaking spears super badass too so spears super fucking cool and just love a magic weapon love a magic weapon with all this lore and it's like we learn all about it and then it's like he gets the weapon he loses the weapon and, and it's very funny at the first at the first beginning when he like is like this thing's like oh take this take the spears i was like oh this is kind of a weird detail we're really honing in on it and then little did i know that was like 
half of what his whole plot line was about but just awesome stuff loved his whole character um shout out and uh rest in peace to uh bury a legend oh, um, bro. look at this uh, since you're on camera i can show you my sale uh ps publishing because the cover is so awesome but that's uh you got bury on the cover holy shit Dude. where the fuck did you get that so cool ebay <laughs> I didn't even know a book like that existed. It's like by far the best cover. Yeah, my cop covers that just like the mass market yeah. one where the like dude's standing in front of an iceberg. P.S. Publishing a sale. Damn, pretty cool. We'll have to tweet it or something. I mean, that's a but yeah, Burry is dope and he's blue, I guess. Right. So they're like, I guess that's the ice or I don't know. But yeah, just, yeah I, uh, I don't really know. But it's just like that's just cool guy and then like gets killed you know whatever also shout out to old bear another real one you know oh dude so cool yeah. and he's like actually a bear and dude just such a freaking what better like epic mentor and mm. whatever and he's like yeah it's cool and he like gets his eye cut out he's like yeah it's all good bro he's like i got my eye cut out too he's like we're good we, we all don't have an eye around here he gets over the eye getting cut out like so quick and he's just like very you know straight Straight back to business, dude. Didn't even take a day off work. You know what I mean? Orman, you got to give him props for that. Yeah. I do like how that's kind of incorporated into some of the action and like how he's moving around, you know? So, I mean, yeah. of course, the plot, it's like not, it's like he's not going to lay up in the hospital, but I don't feel like he, they like, I don't feel like Esselman forgets that the no, eye totally. is lost, you know? Yeah. And it's so sad, the brother. Like, I like the whole thing, how it's like dad, like, really became imbibed into the clans and stuff mm -hmm. and, like, ended up hooking up with, like, the clan leaders, like, sister and whatever, and, like, <sighs> having a kid and, like, yeah, yeah. and I, and they're, you know, he's coming, he's kind of straddling both worlds, but his, like, brothers, like, you know, has to live by the rules of the tribes and whatever. And he's, like, so conflicted and stuff. And ultimately, like, his reluctance is all totally borne out because his freaking brother goes out and, like, gets killed trying to like prove himself to be a man and whatever brutal and why well, he totally proved right you know he did it it was great we all loved yeah. it yeah um yeah. we should actually I, I i we'll do it now but i we didn't mention it earlier could could have connected to kyle but the coots badland the lost they uh oh, yeah, the lost kind of a long time no see for these lads yeah they finally came home and like you know that was the I guess, I don't know what, what they've been doing this whole time since Return of the Crimson Guard, but, like, again, they were, like, the ones who were, like, because I guess they're more pure blood than Kyle because they're higher up the mountain or whatever, and, sure, like, but I they guess. were, like, totally running for days and days together. I thought, I forget which one, Coots is the one who dies. He was kind of, like, Coots the leader. Dies, yeah. yeah, and, you know, I kind of like that. I'm, I'm always here for the, like, Band of Brothers stuff, you know that, you know what I mean? And sure. I kind of love how it, like, breaks Badlands, too, you know what I mean? Or I didn't like it, but it's like I think that's like relatable because they have that very like bantery like there's no emotional you know what I mean they're not like they never say I love you they never like give each other a hug they're never like oh yeah bro you know what I mean there's never any like true emotion shown and then like they're constantly bagging on each other and then like but you know the the like the feelings are there to me that's a relatable way to to write those guys you know what I mean like I'm kind of like that so no I I enjoyed them in the book I I found them to be a, a, a normal you know th this type of scene is very common it was it was as as it goes I felt you know yeah and totally. I, it was a bit sad when Kut side so and he gets shot like and it's all so stupid and pointless too for like this stupid little boy you know what I mean well, especially That's since like, I hadn't seen him in so long I was like oh we're back and then like so a short lived, you know. Yeah. Speaking of haven't seen in a while, I also kind of one of the things I knew going to this book that Fisher was in it. And uh -huh. another way people had pitched this book was to me was that it was about Fisher and boats. Um, Interesting. And I also would not say that that's what this book is about. I mean, both of those things are in the book, but I, uh, I kind of enjoyed yeah. Fisher being in it. I don't know. You, did, 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 did you feel like he added much to the story? I don't know why F Fisher was really in there other than to justify all the like epigraphs we get in, in the book of the fallen, like where all these like things from, you know, Anamandaris. Cause it sounded like that's like, you know, he's like weaving a new song into kind of bear witness or whatever. But, and I thought it was interesting that he was basically like, you know, a lost or whatever. He was like half jagged or whatever. I guess that's how he lived. Like, you know, mm. the thousands and thousands of years to write all these books and whatever. So, but no, I wasn't that, you know, into Fisher one way or the other. I could have taken him or leaving him in this one. I thought it was interesting that he, like, 
named him Jethus and all that, which I think is like a huge, you know, piece of the story that that's like doesn't really I guess he's just has to be there to be a representative at the end for the for the other races or something because yeah. there needs to be a certain like kind of quorum. <laughs> Yeah, I have to tell you, that's another thing that actually kind of made no sense to me. Um, mm. Well, I mean, first off, I guess Jethus is there. You know, Je- Jethus yeah. is kind of cool. I like it. And um, a yeah. lot of people think that's like, you know, are are still I mean, who do you are you an Animander Rake, like kind of reborn? That's not Animander Rake. No fucking way. Yeah. No, it's like, like he I directly was- is Spinnak Durav, right? He like directly talks about playing the whatever the board game is, Kref Ten. Yeah, I don't know. R, and he wants to say, yeah, exactly. yeah, I, that, yeah. I'm a hundred percent in your camp. There's like people who still like relentlessly. They go, yeah, but like Spinnak Durav was the proxy. Like he was going back and telling him which way the Seer Domin moved, and then Animander Rake would like tell him the next move and whatever. And so that's why it could still be. <laughs> And um, the rake. Yeah, I, yeah totally. I I don't want it to be that anyway, because I think it would so cheapen. I you know, fully totally. agree. I for I would be there. <laughs> first off, this series is always bringing stuff, people back to life. And I always find it annoying. And I do think yeah. it really undercuts a lot of the deaths in the series. But yeah. especially and Amanda Rake cannot come back to life. It would be a terrible fucking decision is my official opinion. You know? Yeah. Totally. And I think there's evidence that other other facts that make it spin it too, because he says there's a barrow and, you know, at the end, he's like, there's a barrow outside of Coral. That exactly. I go. Yeah. And Amanda Rake did, was never buddy. He wouldn't want to go visit Seer Domin's barrow. Yeah, he's yeah, I, I've. And the thing is, I feel like the case for it being Amanda Rake is pretty weak, I feel. But yeah. Um, that's ho- that's wishful thinking i think you know, i did tune people. into the i did tune into some of these debates and um you know i don't know i guess it's fun to have them you know you know who is jethus and all but yeah i no. don't know listen if you have a if you have a great argument email me i don't know I, i'm open to hearing it but well pro- you have to give props to esselmont though for like he writes the perfect like depressed emo to standy you know what i mean because oh, yeah. this yeah. is very like lost and emo and and I, whatever. I, I guess i just don't really know why the tis andy were there i mean it's like they're not a founding race and yeah, they're so invaders in this area yeah. why are they the replacement for the chain do you mean like why not anyone else do you mean like i, I, I don't really understand the logic um, yeah they're just like that's what i mean it was like a quorum thing they're like hey we need one more they're like oh jeff this is here grab him <laughs> yeah and like i guess in a way it's like well obviously the tist andy are like the favorite tisty i feel you yeah, know much yeah. like the eater uh get a lot of screen time of course but like i don't know the andy are the favorites right i'm not who are we fooling it's like clearly that's who I yeah know. totally I don't know. That's just I. I feel like that's indisputable. If you've read all these books, you can't disagree that they're the favorites. But anyway, I'm, I'm hoping that it makes sense in retrospect, and that he's going to write some Kyle Jethus buddy cop like novellas or something like that. And then you know what I mean? Maybe. I mean, I, I I don't know. I the thing is, I do think he does a good job. I feel like most of these things, I like you don't need to follow up on them. It's just like oh, they're off into yeah, yeah, totally. they're off into oblivion, and I feel fairly satisfied. They could have a kung fu type show where they just go off and enforce the law across the lands. Yeah. To come to some of the Crimson Guard. Yeah. Kaz is like kind. <laughs> kind what do you think? What a scumbag, right? Kind of a dick, like, right? I I wrote I wrote here's scumbag. my note. Kaz is kind of a prick, right? That was my yeah. Note. Well, dude, he just went goes and hides, and she like it's not just that he like doesn't disclose. You know what I mean? It's like she's legitimately like in his face for like years, going, "What the hell's going on?" You know what I mean? And he's like, "I'm gonna go have a bonfire in the woods." Now. Oh, sorry, and just like something's coming up right now. I really can't. I- I'm just. It's not a good time. You know, how's next week? Yeah. You know, totally. for like d- centuries. You know. Yeah, like, dude, such a scumbag, dude. And like, and then they like, and he finally comes to even at the end, like, you know, he like lights the bonfire. They almost like crash the whole ship. I think even like maybe some of them drown, like, you know, trying to like go back and like pick him up. And he's like, actually, I will come with after all, you know, and they like have to freaking stop at this like super treacherous. It's like, he's just such a like, dude, it's like, are you a leader, bro? You're like such a child, like to the point where you're like, yeah, I'm going to like stick my head in the sand so deep that like people are going to have to die, you know, just to kind of, I could have just told them what's up. (laughs) 
my I a hundred percent agree. Um, I, I really liked following Shimmer in this book, mm. and I thought she had a interesting journey. And as you're saying, to confront to, to confronting Kaz and kind of examining and holding more accountable directly. I almost wish that was explored further in this book. And yeah. I feel like there's a lot of meat on that bone. And despite us spending all of this time with the Crimson Guard, I still feel like there's probably more you could have gotten into with some of it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to see like them at the coffee shop after this. Like, yo, you've got a lot of splaining to do, right? <laughs> like, what? Well, um, but they just kind of are like, oh, oh, OK, you know, the thing. And then they're like, oh, well, yeah, like, OK, I get it. And, they're and not so, like, bro, what the F? Like, come on, dog. 100 percent. In my mind, in some way, that actually feels like kind of the beginning of the story. You know, yeah. like, doesn't the story really begin when there's this Crimson Guard thing and then they learn about that? And like, isn't the fallout from that revelation? That seems to be more interesting than a lot of. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd be very curious in that, you know? Yeah, exactly. They're like, hey, Kaz, we're going to go put your skull on top of a thing. And that's just where you're going to be like other Tawana I'm asked now. Yeah. You freaking you blew it. Um, I love the shimmer and the bars thing, though. I love that the like that, you know, that's like the ultimate power couple. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know how that relationship works now that she's like dead or she'll slowly like be, I guess, dying off now or rotting from here on out, I guess. Yeah, I didn't super understand what state she ends up in. I will say I found uh, her being raped to be uh, fully unnecessary and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I was I didn't enjoy it. And um, I, I haven't spoken much about it. I'm fairly critical of Erickson's writing on the subject. I, I don't think yeah. Esselman handles it much better, but I do think um, I forgot about that part. I think I must have blocked it out. But yeah, that was uh, that was gnarly. I mean, I guess. The thing is, it's just such a smaller part of these books. Um, obviously, Erickson's trying to get at it in a larger way or say something about it. And I feel like um, it has a presence in these books, but uh, uh, much, much less so. So uh, just yeah. a quick note. Not on my that. favorite part of the book. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, pretty brutal. But lucky for us, we adjacent to this on a note is a great note that Lady missed that whole mm. scene. Yeah. And uh, just great stuff. Everything about Lady Mist rules. Totally. Dude, I just want to see that, like, you know, somebody draw that or like a little like short made of her, like flanked on the throne by the, you know, kind of possessed, like demonic, like jagged dudes who are just all beastly and freaking shooting out mist. And exactly. Like to me. Cinematic this, for sure. hundred percent. This is the type of stuff I actually think Esselmont does great. You know, he's yeah. like writing cool action and it's like, uh, it's like I, it's eat, I imagine it on my head in a snap. And it also is just kind of evoking kind of great classic fantasy ideas and like putting a fun spin on them and then kind of putting a, putting them some mouths and flavor on it and just having a, have, letting us have fun in that moment, you know? And, yeah. and, and something I've always thought this, these books do a lot better than Erickson's is that they are willing to just have kind of unabashed fun, you know? Totally. Just hugely cinematic moments. Like, dude, I think that they, you know, I don't know if you're watching wheel of time on, amazon but i think they could like take the the ice stuff because they're written in a very cinematic way like stone wielder in those like freaking war battles with the morath galleys going up against the mayor you know what i mean it's like they could freaking take it peel out some of the stuff that doesn't work and whatever and tighten it up and like you know what i mean and like have some pretty badass like footage or whatever like you know what i mean like mm. scenes to watch that they could make out of some of this stuff or like orb scepter throne right like uh, when they're all running down the thing and the dragonflies come down they like drop a million freaking grenades on them you know what i mean no yeah and i think just like having those cool moments i don't know i just i don't know it's i, I don't know other words to try them but it's like you know it's cool in a way a lot of other stuff isn't you know of course endings in erickson books can be cool but they're very different and um yeah, i just no. feel like he the lady miss type of sequence is is great you know i just feel like that stuff rules and on a related night uh i have no idea to say the name the the skeleton -y thingy yuriki your your yurki i don't know oh yeah the thing that like had the yeah the skull the, thing it was like the bone the bridge of bone or whatever that is just like literally piles and piles of bone and he's like the the guardian dude yeah that was freaking totally cinematic you want to see that for sure see and that's the stuff i love because 
I feel like this and Lady Miss things show up and you get to have a lot of fun with them, but they don't yeah. really overstay their welcome. And they're just kind of short pit stops on like a larger story that I do think has more meat on itself, you know? Totally. It's like you got to cross a bridge. Why not put a really badass troll type thing there? Yeah. I want to get some closing thoughts. My last note here is at one point, uh, this is just a quick, a similar gr- gripe that I have to another point in Erickson's books. At one point, Jute is surprised that some, uh, that like, uh, Jan's attracted to a woman. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, I, I, it's just this thing that happens. It's happened in Erickson books, too. I just just doesn't really make any sense to me at all. I, I don't I, I don't understand why that would happen. And it doesn't it doesn't make sense. But so that's just a complete confusion for me. And just noting that. But yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other kettle of fish. So I guess that's everything I have on my notepad. Any other notes you got? Any other thoughts you want to bring up? No, I thought it was like a good uh, kind of wrap up to the whole thing. I think that this kind of underscores, you know, how it's all like like for me, the connective tissue is the Crimson Guard stuff. You know what I mean? Pretty much. I think Night and Knives is a standalone thing, but that's the through line and stuff. And I do think it it was a great conclusion to that, like arc and stuff and like it actually adds more meaning to my Crimson Guard interactions that you get like in the main books, just because like I feel like for me, I, you know, there was no connection reading Book of the Fall and really like they show up in Gardens of the Moon. They show up a few times. People talk about them and stuff. But like, you know, this is like has kind of got me on Team Crimson Guard. So, well, I agree. I mean, obviously, I feel like they could be entirely removed from Erickson's books and probably those books would be improved for it. Yeah. But I think they're uh, here and really interesting in these books. And um, I, I liked spending time with them. There are many Crimson Guard I liked. And uh, yeah, no, no, def- definitely. I feel like they're a fun through line. I like following Kyle. I know there's Kyle yeah. haters out there, but that's not one of me, you know. Um, No, he did good in this book and he's an interesting he has an interesting development. He's like been through it all. Right. He's been on the Crimson Guard. He's been fighting for the Malazans. He's been all over the world. Now he's like an independent contractor. So I feel like the worst thing I could say about Kyle is I guess he's a little generic, you know, Uh, but I think that's the most that's the worst thing I could levy. But I, I I don't know. I feel like it's still pretty interesting. Also, sh- a side note, a Kyle adjacent note. It is really fun to hear people talk about Greymane and the events of Stonewielder in this book. Yes, you know? totally. Yeah. So. And Stonewielder is a great book, too. There's like so much like, you know, he gets deep on that one, too. I think like thematically and there's a lot more, philo- you know, philosophic stuff there. Mm-hmm. But I think, it, you know, it's interesting that you say that this is the beginning of the Crimson Guard story, too, because I'd love to see what they do now, knowing that they're like going to live forever. Right. Like kind of chilling on stratum now. It's like, so we're just going to s- chill in stratum for like thousands and thousands of years or like that's an interesting concept too like what do you do with that knowledge now <laughs> you know what i mean it's yeah. weird like yeah they have a lot of lot of decisions to make so yeah well, i mean i guess there's a way in which this is the end of the crimson guard story if you take this idea that they've come to peace with like setting down their eternal battle so to speak totally. but I don't know if I remain. Yeah. I, I don't know if I remain convinced that this is like the. Uh, and, and then there's were never any problems again, you know. Or like I could see him going and being jagged or something, and just being in like solitude. It's like, what are you going to do? You're just going to master like a million different hobbies, like read every single book. Like I don't. It'd be weird to know that you were going to just like. It'd be fun for like 150 years, and you just go tear it up and do everything. You know what I mean? But then eventually you'd be like, yeah. But <laughs> but and the thing is, a lot of great fantasy and science fiction men ran about like what uh, that that those types of questions about how if how longevity your life affects those things so uh, shang chi yeah uh, it's it's a uh, rich ground and uh, i would gladly read more about the crimson guard part of me thinks we're gonna not get anything further about them is my impression yeah no i think like they're gonna well i i think the gistle is his next one and that's like supposed to be fleshing out you know between the end of path to ascendancy and the start of night and i have so I, i'm happy to see that part get more explored too so i take it all here's my official prediction i believe um those other three books that are coming out because i think esselman got paid to 
make four, five, and six if a follow up's a oh, path to ascendancy, right? I gotcha. Cool. I, I, I believe I could be mistaken, but I, well, awesome. I mean, there's at least just a, but I believe more coming out after that. That's all to say, but I don't believe those books will bring us up to Knight of Knives. I believe then Carcanus is before, and I think the only thing we will get chronologically post this book. Is witness. Is witness. And witnesses, I mean, at least the God is not willing, is a much smaller scale story. I don't know. I would be like maybe a random Crimson Guard shows up, but part of me can't. I don't know. Who knows where that trilogy goes, but I feel like it'd be really weird for the Crimson Guard to show up in those books. Totally. He put a bow on it, I feel like. I mean, I'm sh- maybe he could do it. I don't know, but I, I don't He's know. He's got to leave something for us nerds to to kind of obsess about in the Discord. We can't have it all, I guess. But the thing is like this. I mean, it's like there's because of the way Malazan is and kind of inherently to how they're telling these stories, there's not going to be some return of the Jedi moment where like, <laughs> and then everyone's there and we've all done it. That's the definitive ending, period. Yeah. You know? Totally, yeah. There's so many threads, you could never do that. Exactly. So we're never going to have every, all 2,000 named characters, you know. Totally. All right. Um. So uh, we might try and do some sort of other wrap-up thing, but I would just be curious to hear your thoughts about maybe where you place a sale in this greater Esselmont, uh, in, in these novels, The Mouse and Empire, and uh, yeah. just maybe thoughts looking back on these six books, revisiting them. Yeah, I like them all. I think they work together, especially Return of the Crimson Guard to Sail, I think is kind of, you know, can be seen as one, you know, arc or whatever, one kind of through line. I think that Stone Wielder, like you said, it grows on me. Every time I think back on it, I, I especially after, you know, reading it a couple times now and not being bogged down with trying to figure stuff out that I could, you know, appreciate and enjoy all the like deeper themes and stuff and not be trying to understand how it related to other books and whatever. I think Orb Scepter Throne is just like such a badass action packed book. So I think that's, you know, probably my top two. And then I, I really like a sale. I really like the the conclusion. I felt like he kind of he answered a lot of questions. And I actually I think I was just so kind of won over by the Crimson Guard piece that that, you know, just kind of cemented it for me as as one of my favorites. Yeah. Interesting to hear that. Um, I agree. Obviously, I think uh, now that I've read all six of them, it's like clear there is like a through line, so to speak. I mean, I do think describing them as vaguely connected is probably the most accurate. But um, I think Night of Knives probably remains one of the ones I like the most. I feel like that's a contra. I feel like people do not. Yeah. I-, I-, I know you either love it or you hate it. I love it. I- I'm a fan. I-, I know not everyone is, but I know there's people have different opinions. Hot take. But um. I think if I were to return to one of these books, I'd probably want to pick up Orb Scepter Throne because I liked it so much. Just a fun book. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I also would totally pick up Blood and Bone again. I just feel like I love oh, the yeah. vibe and the setting of that book. And, uh, you know, you know, this one, a, sa- a sale, Return of the Crimson Guard, Stone Wielder. Maybe I'd come back to, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, a lot of yeah. other books out no. there. But um, I certainly uh, do not regret spending any of my time with Esselmont. And um, yeah, I-, I-, I do stand by saying I don't think people should read these books interwoven with the Erickson's books if they're going to tackle mm-hmm. Malazan. Um, yeah. But um, I-, I don't know. I think they're... I, we've talked about this kind of near the beginning of the mini series. There are different books, but I think they're worthwhile to get into. And I'm glad we read them and I'm glad we had the chance to make these shows together. Yeah, no, it was amazing. And I think, you know, it's all about your expectation. If you go in expecting it to be these big philosophic ponderous tomes like it told the hounds or something, then, you know, you're probably going to be disappointed if you just love the world and want, ready to have like an action packed adventure. Then these are super dope, especially if you're a sucker for lore and all that. Like he does the magic and the lore and all that you know i'm not qualified to judge his writing capabilities and whatever but they're like you know you don't have to hold your nose to get through these books they're you know what i mean they're fun to read so i fully agree and i i think although i like knight of knives the most i think uh i think his writing only gets better i mean he he, he can yeah. he can turn a phrase you know agreed no and, and i so appreciate the opportunity to talk through him dude like i'm a huge um ice evangelist or i try to be and so i'm always looking for opportunities to kind of spread the word and and you've given us a, a huge platform to shine a light on these books and i just appreciated the opportunity to have somebody to to nerd out so thank you so much man yeah i appreciate uh 
uh, you being so up to reread these books and uh, kind of uh, you having this veteran advice, kind of being able to share that perspective and kind of offer your thoughts. They're always so good. Um, now, uh, listen, this is obviously uh, kind of putting some a, a bow on it, so to speak, but we may or may not be back. So uh, send us an email, your Esselmont heads. Send us your email about Path to Ascendancy or, or, or uh, and, and what do you think? Have you read it? Do you think we should read it? Uh, Iskar as we've shared some thoughts we might get to it in 2022 we might not we're gonna feel it out and uh, we might uh, be back with some other stuff too we're gonna feel it out but regardless of that it's been a great 2021 recording uh, these six episodes so thank you so much Iskar you bet and uh, see you thanks